represents the tiniest of steps towards normality. But many Italians will welcome Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte's decision to allow some of the country's shops to open for business. From Tuesday the 14th of April, we will reopen stationery stores, bookshops and shops for babies and children. We received so many requests, so many difficulties had been reported to us. So we opened with caution, testing these activities first. Economists say the lockdown has cost Italy more than $50 billion since it began on March the 12th. The number of new COVID-19 cases have dropped steadily over the past few weeks. But apart from the few retailers listed by Conti, the lockdown will remain in place until at least May the 3rd. His decision follows similar steps taken by Spain. Workers in its construction and manufacturing sectors returned to work on Monday, as the daily death toll continued its downward trend and new infections fell to their lowest levels in three weeks. Several other European countries have also loosened restrictions. Austria has reopened thousands of shops, and in Denmark, younger children have started to return to school. But in other parts of Europe, it's a different story. President Emmanuel Macron has extended the lockdown in France until May the 11th. He said more lives can be saved only if strict measures remain in place. For all for all those who need assistance during this period, the state aid for those not going to work and funding for companies will be extended and reinforced. Such measures have never been seen before, and they already protect more than 8 million employees and many of our companies. French Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire said the country's economy is expected to contract by 8% this year due to the coronavirus, and that the government would assist small companies with around $5,500 each. The World Health Organization also remains cautious about the easing of restrictions. WHO wants to see restrictions lifted as much as anyone. At the same time, lifting restrictions too quickly could lead to a deadly resurgence. The way down can be as dangerous as the way up if not managed properly. Countries across Europe are facing the tough choice between saving as many lives as possible and preventing their economies from spiralling even further downward. At least one million people on the continent have lost their jobs so far, according to the European Trade Union Confederation. The moves by Italy, Spain and others are intended to save jobs and businesses, but they're taking the steps as tentatively as possible to save lives as well. Shamim Chowdhury, TRT World. Well, for more on this, let's go to Pietro Paganini in Rome. He's an adjunct professor of business administration at Temple University in Philadelphia and John Cabot University in Rome. He's also the co-founder of sustainable development think tank Competere. Welcome to Money Talks, Pietro. Now, as we know, tens of thousands of people have died from COVID-19 in Europe alone. People are continuing to die from the disease. Is now the right time for countries like Austria, Denmark, Italy and Spain to be reopening their economies? Oh, well, that's a question that unfortunately we can only answer when we see facts. And uh, luckily, I'm not at the government to take such a tough decision. Uh, but, you know, if I look at the Italian government as well as the Spanish government, they are under a tremendous pressure. On one side, there are still numbers that are better and brighter. But on the other side, you also have, you know, um, uh, big businesses, small businesses, and you have an, an incredible amount of workers that, you know, they work in the black economy and they need to get back because they don't have a salary right now and businesses are not making money. And then they complain that other parts of Europe are working. So these are main competitors. So the, the government was under pressure and this decision to reopen is the sort of in between. Uh, the government is trying to, but at the same time, is also trying not to. Uh, and uh, we'll see the results in the, in the coming days. We also know that the EU uh, Eurozone finance ministers have really been struggling to come up with a significant uh, coordinated response to this outbreak. The wealthier nations in the north of Europe are very reluctant to give money or even loans to those in the south. Uh, should the Eurozone, should the EU be doing more to help the poorer nations who are suffering through this? Well, you know, every nation has its own economy. If you look at Italy, it's a, it's a very much split country in two parts, a strong economy in the north and the, the, the slower economy 
in, in the south. And here there is a battle on how Europe should be ruled and how what are the tools and instruments that Europe should take. And there are different approaches. You know, I pr primarily support uh, the euro bonds because I think Europe is in the condition to do these euro bonds. But you know, in the Nordic countries, they fear that the too many risks in the south or in the incapacity of the south to take strong managerial decision in managing uh, public finance might cost a lot to them. So it's going to be it's going to be a very long discussion. And I think in a way, you know, it's a, Europe is a young project and it might take some so much time. On the other side, you know, you have the COVID-19 today and families, people, pensioners, retired people, young kids. We're forgetting young kids. They, they need answers right now. Mm, that's right. Now, the economic pressure that's being felt by Europe was highlighted in the IMF's latest World Economic Outlook. It says that the Eurozone will be one of the hardest hit economically and will most likely suffer a 7.5% contraction this year. That's a huge, a huge uh, amount, isn't it? How quickly can Europe rebound from this contraction? Well, it depends on, on the country. I'm sorry, I can't give you the, the right answer. If I look at Italy and Spain, it might take some time, considering the uh, Italian economy was already uh, slow, very slow, close to zero. We were aiming at a 1%. And it very much depends on how this uh, coming back or going back process is going to last. If I look at some rumors and intelligence information we got uh, exactly today, this process is going to be very slow. So, you know, we would dream and expect that tomorrow everything is open and I can go back to my restaurant, you know, have a good meal and go dancing and buying a lot of things uh, in shops. The reality is this process will be extremely, extremely long. We're talking over a year if you know things uh, uh, go smoothly so the economy will be will be slow on the other side we saw that today some businesses went back and i'm not just talking about shops i'm talking about mechanic industry uh, primary sector and and this is a good news uh, the question is is the virus coming back is the virus still here is it such a, a step that we should have not taken uh, that's unfortunately a question that we will be able to answer you know in the next days Okay, Pietro Paganini in Rome, thank you so much for joining us on Money Thank Talks. you indeed.